All right, guys, so this is my part two video about timeshares versus vacation homes, the pros and cons of each. In my part one, I talked about the pros and cons of vacation homes. So if you missed that, make sure you go back and check that out. In this video, I'm going to be talking about the pros and cons of owning a timeshare. So let's talk about it. So what are some of the pros about owning a timeshare? Well, you have the ability to vacation pretty much anywhere in the world for super cheap than you would, say, if you were buying a hotel there or whatever, staying for the duration of a week or whatever. You know, you have that op option and flexibility to just go pretty much anywhere within your timeshare uh you know, where, where it's available. Now they do have this thing called like a RCI exchange. If you, if you want to go say to Europe or something and your timeshare company that you invest into is not there, then they can exchange it and they can do something to get you there pretty much for the same deal that you would with the points that you built up. So that way you can go whenever you want. That's how they've adjusted to that. Another, um, pro about timeshare is the fact that it's cheap to buy. You know, average timeshare could be about $20,000, maybe even less. So it's not as big of an investment as it is buying like their vacation home for like an Airbnb, for example. So, you know, um, another pro is you don't have to worry about the upkeep of the, the unit. You know, if you, you, got, you got people there cutting the grass, cleaning the pools, you don't have to worry about nothing. They can do all that for you. So all the fees that you're paying, all that is attributed and, and allocated to that. Now, some of the drawbacks to timeshare is the investment. You know, um, you got to think about it. It doesn't really appreciate in value. More people are trying to get rid of their timeshare than buying into. And they're getting rid of it for a lot of reasons. A common reason people are getting rid of it is they're finding out after they sign those contracts, not only are they in debt for life in terms of having some type of um, maintenance fees to pay, but that also goes to their kids if they die. So you got to make sure that before you sign that contract, know what you're signing, know what your kids are going to be inheriting. A lot of these salespeople really don't explain that thoroughly because they're not uh, attorneys. So you might want to have an attorney on hand with you if you go in, just my suggestion, um, or have one review it at least before you sign it. Um, another con could be is the fact that you're getting sold this and like trying to purchase that day with all these perks and incentives and all this stuff. Like it's too quick to make a decision that day. You just came there for a tour. You, you signed up for it. You knew what you were getting into. But to make a decision that day without really looking over the contract, without having someone you know, take time to advise you on your financial goals. It's, it's very challenging to see how uh, seeing a property and then going into a 90 minute presentation and buying that day is beneficial to you. Um, another con is the maintenance fees can be add up, add up on you. I mean, they do go up because the more improvement they do to the community, although you're splitting it with other owners, those maintenance fees, everybody's individually um, responsible for and you have to pay. And even though you can go anywhere you want on the vacation, you still have to book and you still have to have a certain amount of points because what happens if they have all that booked up? You got to go find another resort in another area. And who wants to do that when you're paying ownership for it? So just think about the investment.